Hello, welcome to Lecture 4, Communication 1110. Before I go on, let me remind you that you can also find a PDF version of these lectures written out, and you can find PowerPoint of them uh, with the class materials as well. The PDF is very long. It includes a lot more examples, but it is the same material as are the, the PowerPoints. So far, we have looked at uh, a couple of aspects of communication, the ancients' view of it and some contemporary theories of, of communication. I'd like to now focus on the main subject matter of this class, which is public speaking, and some basic information that I think you need to know before we move forward. It's very hard to condense everything you need to know about public speaking into 15 or 20 minutes, but if, this, if I had to do it, this would be the lecture. And we will expand upon these ideas later in the class. Again, these lectures are uh, complementary to Chapter 1, so please be reading that. First of all, I want to talk about some basic universal communication or public speaking truths and then we're going to look at some very specific rules that over the years I've sort of compiled to help my students keep track of what I want in the class, but also what would be applicable to any speaking situation that they would be in. I call them the non-negotiable rules. But first, let's talk about the three universal public speaking truths. The first one is that the audience is king, or another word would be sovereign. It's all about the audience. You have to know your audience. And we're going to talk in the class a lot of, about how to analyze your audience, but what I want to, to uh, introduce you to right now is going back to that idea of questions. That as your audience is sitting there, there are two basic questions that are on their mind and that you as a speaker need to be ready to answer and probably should answer indirectly within the context of the speech. The first question I call the egocentric question. This is it also the what's in it for me, W-I-I-F-M's -I -I question. The audience is sitting there saying, how does this fit into my life? How does this affect me? How does this affect my pocketbook, my job, my relationships, my family, my life, etc.? And any good speaker is conscious of that and somehow answers the need to know question. Why do I need to know this? Why is this important to me? Keep that in mind. And you can answer that one directly sometimes in the speech and in the introduction. This is important because. The second question is what I call the credibility question. The, the audience is asking, well, who are you? What are your credentials? Why are you qualified to talk about this subject? You may need to answer that one a little less directly, but it's still an important question. Your credibility as a speaker informs everything. So those are the two big questions. Of course, there are other questions the audience is asking that are more specific to your topic or purpose, but those are two core questions you should always be aware of and be able to answer. The second of the universal public speaking truths is that public speaking requires or involves muscle memory. Public speaking is a physical activity. It involves your whole body from your feet to your head and of course it involves your brain. <laughs> so it's very uh, physically tiring. I, I, this summer I was teaching a, a class and I'd been off for about a month or so and the first day I taught I was so tired because of lecturing for uh, an extended period of time very physically tiring and that's just the way it should be because every part of you is involved as you practice as a public speaker you get more and more comfortable in your skin you know what your body's supposed to do you know how to use your eyes you know how to look at people you know how to gesture you know how to stand so just like a, learning a sport there's a physical uh, muscle memory to public speaking as well and a lot of people overlook that they think it's all cerebral and it's not the third universal public speaking truth is that um, all public speaking, and you've heard this before in the last lecture, involves a content and relationship dimension. Don't forget that. That any time you speak to a group of people, there's content going on, the research, the ideas you've done, 
but there's also relationship. And if you have not built a relationship, let's say in class you've, you've not been a team player, people have, you've not developed relationships, people are not going to trust what you have to say. There's always content and relationship going on, and a lot of people forget that. All right, I'd like to move on to the, the specific rules or non-negotiable rules. And I used to have 10 of these and call them the 10 commandments, but now I have 15. So, And I have separated these into rules about context, rules about content, and rules about delivery. And there are a few under each category. The first one is rules about context. The first rule about context, and this is one of these rules, and I call them non-negotiable. They're inviolable never exceed expected or given time limits. Now that's hard for a lot of people and this is usually where I do my little introvert extrovert explanation. Some of you are introverts, you don't like the whole idea of this class, some of you are extroverts and each group has its own uh, negative side to that. An introvert prepares a lot but is uncomfortable in front of people and an extrovert sometimes doesn't prepare because he or she is so comfortable in front of people. And both sides need to be uh, aware of that. But regardless, never exceed expected or time limits. If you're given 20 minutes to speak, don't assume you can take 25 or 30 or more. You're given 20. You should probably take and plan for about 18 so you have some wiggle room and if people have any questions. But keep in mind the time limits and how important they are. The second uh, rule under context is don't tell the audience what they already know. That is the half of the definition of boring. The other half is that it doesn't relate to them. People are only influenced by new information. So for example if someone smokes, if you just tell them that's bad for them, they've heard that. They need information they haven't heard before. The third rule under context is being prepared means never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> it's a line from an old movie. But it, it's just the idea of being prepared. Do not apologize to the audience, verbally or non-verbally, for being unprepared. Be prepared. And the fourth rule of context, always have a plan B. Things go wrong, especially with technology. You need to be ready to keep it going. The show must go on. I say that having a plan B is a good rule for life as well, especially if you're in school. If you have a, a babysitter, babysitters get sick, you need to have a backup babysitter. If you have a ride, you need a backup ride. Plan Bs are good for life. All right, let's move on to the rules about content. I have a seven of these. The first one is the most effective speeches are the ones that answer the questions in the minds of the audience. That is the thesis sentence for this class. Let me say it again. The most effective speeches are the ones that answer the questions in the minds of the audience. The second rule of content is speeches should be purpose-driven rather than topic-driven. This is a little different. And I use that purpose-driven you know, as a reference to a famous book to kind of hook you about this. But keep in mind that what you're trying to achieve is the big picture and the topic fits into that. Focus on what you're trying to achieve in the audience's mind more than just what your topic is. Topic's important but the purpose is more important. The third rule of content is KISS. K-I-S-S. -S. And you may have heard that before. It means keep it simple and we won't call anybody stupid. We'll say student or speaker. Keep it simple. And there are a couple of uh, ways you can look at this. The first one is, going back to the previous point, focus on one purpose. In this class I'll ask you to write a specific purpose for your speeches. The word and should not appear in them. Focus on one purpose. The textbook is very good about explaining this. The second aspect of KISS has to do with visual aids or in this case PowerPoint slides. PowerPoint slides allow you to do all kinds of wonderful things dancing leprechauns, color, fonts, all kinds of things. But simplicity, elegance, clarity is what you want to work for. So a visual aid should have one idea, one graphic, uh, one chart per slide. Um, if you put a lot of pictures on it, the audience doesn't know what to look at. Keep it very focused and simple, each slide. 
and then also limit your colors and fonts. You wouldn't want to have a lot of different colors and fonts on one slide. slide. So keep it simple in your visual aids as well. The fourth rule under content is remember the power of story. Story is your most powerful tool as a public speaker. That's why the first speech you give in this class is a personal story. I want you to tell stories. Stories reach people. They love them. And they remember it. If I were to tell stories in these lectures, the thing you would remember a year from then would be, oh, she told this story. The fifth rule is to hit the concrete, and that's a kind of a, a silly way to say that you should think in terms of specific, concrete, real-life examples. People need those, and those examples should be relevant and accessible. And by that I mean people should be able to go, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're thinking about. If they have to sit there and think about, well, I'm not familiar with that example, et cetera, et cetera, you've lost them. Examples, just like humor, need to be accessible and immediate for people. And the next one is don't use words that you don't know or can't pronounce. You might say, what a silly rule. But I have found that sometimes students will use words and they, they're not 100% sure of their meaning. Be sure that you're 100% sure what a word means and also find out what it, how it's pronounced. You can either ask me or a better source might be to go to dictionary.com because they have a little icon you can push of a speaker and it, and it uh, pronounces the word for you if you're unsure about how it's pronounced. But you don't want to confuse people. If you aren't sure what a word means, the audience probably isn't sure what it means either. The last rule of content gets into humor and that is if it's not funny to the audience, it's not funny. This goes back to audience is king. I didn't say it may not be funny to other people, but it has to be funny to the audience for it to be effective. Humor is very personal and volatile, and it can work for you or against you. And I like humor, but you need to be sure that your humor is practiced, that it's actually funny. So tell the joke if you're going to tell a joke to other people that you trust, and be sure that they find it funny. <laughs> Be sure that you tell the joke. Don't ever, ever read a joke. That is not something you want to do. And practice it a good uh, bit and be sure that it's not offensive to any group of people. So humor is great, but it should be relevant and practiced and, and have a point in the speech. Then we come to the rules about delivery. And I have uh, four or five of these. The first one is that your speech starts the minute the audience can see you. Now, I'm not timing you necessarily, but what I mean by that is the way you approach the lectern, the, the speaking area, and the way you walk away from it is part of the overall impression of your speech. If you walk towards it as if you're going to the guillotine and you walk away like you've just had a root canal, that does not communicate well. That is part of the whole package, so to speak. Secondly, don't talk to anything except the audience. Eye contact, eye contact, eye contact. The primary way in Western culture with, by which we show connection with people is eye contact. It's not true for other cultures, but it is true for ours. So what I want you to think about with eye contact is that you can only look at one person at a time, right? So think about that. Think about, I'm talking to this person for a while then I'll talk to this person for a while. You're not talking to every, you can't have eye contact with everybody at the same time. Talk to individuals. And that will help you with your stage fright as well. The third rule of delivery is that enthusiasm covers a multitude of problems. And there's an old saying that people don't know how, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I like that. Passion is extremely important. Heart, are you committed? Do you have conviction about what you're saying? And people want that. They want to know that you care. I'm taking a class this summer with a professor who I don't agree with a lot of her ideas, but I do know that she is passionate about what she's doing and the subject matter, and that means a whole lot to me as, as a um, fellow teacher. So um, passion, conviction, enthusiasm, these are really important to your delivery and to your speaking in general. The, Next one is practice, then practice, and then practice. 
You've probably heard all your life, practice makes perfect. Well, I'm going to disagree with that. Practice makes permanent. So you have to be sure that you practice correctly. If you practice incorrectly, you're going to have permanent incorrect kind of behaviors. How can you practice correctly? Well, first of all, when you practice your speeches, you need to stand up because you will be giving the speech to stand up and there's a different feel to sitting down and standing up. So be standing when you practice. You should try to make the practice as real to the real performance as possible. Find a room that's larger so you get the feel of the room. If you can get a few people in the audience, even your dog or your cat to listen to you, although they tend to do uh, things like run after things, but I don't know about that. But having an audience can help you. Um, filming yourself, we have a practice studio on campus where you can go and film yourself. I even encourage people to wear shoes. Shoes make a difference. Some people like to practice in front of a mirror. That never worked for me, but it's, if it works for you, that's fine. Um, again, I would say a, a room, find a room on campus where you can practice would be a good idea. And most importantly, each time you practice, time yourself because the only way you're going to know that a speech is the right time is if you time it when you practice. And keep in mind that when you get up to speak, you'll probably get a little nervous and talk faster, so you want to be conscious of that, to keep it slow, but also to not have a six-minute speech. If you're supposed to have a six-minute speech and then it's, you know, uh, just that long, you might go too fast. So be conscious of that. All right. So. Those are the basic universal public speaking truths and the, the non-negotiable rules. And thank you for listening.